In this show, we'll help you get the right capture card for your live stream. Disclaimer. All products featured on this show have been purchased and used by Strive. We have not been sent any of these products to review, and our recommendation comes from real-world use and application. Welcome to the Tech and Teaching Podcast, where we give you the tips, tricks, and drop general knowledge bombs Kaboom. on how you and your school can improve your live stream or podcast. I am Eric, Director of Productions. This is Jordan. Uh, the the AV specialist. Today, it's the what, how, and why around capture cards. Short and sweet episode we are expecting. We'll see how long we can ramble. But we're going to give you some examples, uh, give you our recommendations. But really, this is the piece of equipment that makes the video stream go. Yeah, I would very much agree. It's a very important part of a video live stream. And for no bigger than it is, it's it's the key. It's it's what makes the world go around. So uh, let's just jump straight into uh, into our examples. The first one is over there in front of you. And it is the yes. Black Magic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And I've been at Strive now for eight years. When we first started, there was a there was a uh, a shuttle, but this was like this was like step two. This was Thunderbolt two, and in its time, Jordan, it was <laughs> one of the the best price points. It was. Not that durable ever, but it was. It's You're junk. Trying so it's hard. junk now. It is. It is. Please don't be using it anymore. You know, it, it's the the best key use case is a uh, paperweight. Moving it on. is. No, it, <laughs> it was Thunderbolt two, and the casing always broke inside, which was always weird because it, this metal case that the product comes in is like a tank. Yeah, it, you feel like you could drive over it and it would be okay, but the little tiny metal piece where the Thunderbolt two would plug in. Would break all the time. It was rather rather fragile, yeah, for what it was. But it did do SDI and HDMI in, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, it, it it's a good paperweight. And but the, the other, they did come out with the three G. They do have a three G recorder. That's Thunderbolt three, and um, it Wirecast has now made um, an integration that you can switch between SDI and HDMI in in the software in the Wirecast software rather than in the desktop video setup software, which is what is needed to run this thing. And that was another pain point that we had with it yes. um, for a, from a support standpoint of there's three other softwares that you'd have to have just right to make it all go around. Your, your operating system, your Wirecast version, and your desktop video setup mm -hmm. version had to all be compatible and in sync with each other for that thing to work. Yes. And it, it, it was kind of, there's been nightmares with this. Um, and, and so now, and, and it gets super, super hot. That's the you hot could, pocket. You could cook with this thing. It, it is the heater in your easy bake oven. How many, how many August and September football game streams were derailed by the fact that that thing was in the press box all afternoon. And then we'd try to stream and, the support calls of, my video is terribly glitchy. I don't know what happened. I've only had things set up for seven hours. That thing would be like a 1,000 degrees yeah, by it, 5 o'clock before you ever started to stream with it, and then it would proceed to melt from there. Yeah, it, it was bad. Um, the three the three G recorders still get hot, um, We we but all in all, we have moved away from the Blackmagic capture cards just because the software, and they do get warm, and cable not included. They don't yes. give you a cable. They don't. So that's just that's more of an inconvenience and a frustration than anything. Moving on to the next one uh, is the the only thing I've ever called it is the thumb drive capture. And this uh, the, the nice thing about this is no cable needed because it literally plugs straight into a USB A with your HDMI cord on the other end. Mm -hmm. That is where the niceties of this uh, particular device really kind of stop. Uh, its frame rate, we're not quite sure if it will go all the way to 30. <laughs> One of its good things was uh, its price point was like $25. Uh, you can find a capture that looks uh, similar to this for like $17 somewhere on Amazon. I, honestly, I, I bought it just to try it. And we have used it a couple times as like a scoreboard camera. And it works really capture. good for that. It's not bad for that. It's, it, it's actually kind of okay. Uh, would I use it for the actual video stream? No. I have had schools. I don't know how it worked. You want to talk about walking the tightrope, but they plugged multiple cameras into multiple of these into a single USB hub 
and then that hub plugged into the computer, and they streamed multiple mats of wrestling with multiple of these, and I have no idea how that actually worked. I just, so I still, still to this day, I'm like, no. Mm. Yeah. But so it, it did, apparently. It, it, it's worth noting that now we are getting, moving forward, these are <laughs> USB devices, and there, there's no hardware or uh, software involved with them. When you get more than, I'd say, two maximum for these USB capture cards plugged into one computer, you're going to be fine on one to two, obviously one, but not four, because your computer actually is going to get confused or can get confused. Wirecast can throw fits that it doesn't know what you're looking at for the most part, right. because it something with, with the how they do the the USB assigning. Is yes. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. And whereas you you could do that with the three G or the mini recorders because desktop video setup software, it serialized everything and it knew which one was what and it could operate that yep. in that fashion. Yep. USB devices, not so much. Okay. So now we're going to get to the ones that we would actually recommend and we would actually be okay selling. <laughs> Yes, please knock that little one over. By the way, you could tell these are get these get used. Like when we say we recommend this stuff, we actually have tried this stuff because yeah, if we've gaff taped it, we've used it. It's ours. It's ours. Uh, so this is the Magewell. This is the USB capture HDMI. There is a slightly different model of this particular device, the USB capture HDMI plus that has a an HDMI loop out. Yep. Uh HDMI. There we go. HDMI Boom. loop out, which we have had some schools go, you know what? We want the video from the camera to go to like the commons area. Didn't have, we don't care about anything else. We just want the video. Mm -hmm. Well, in that regard, that would be the type of device. Of course, you lose then your scoreboard, you lose any graphics or anything right. else you would have on your stream. But if you wanted just a video stream, that would do it. This particular device, cord included. Uh, and it is a pr proprietary uh, USB cord. It's yeah. blue. You really can't miss it. They're black now. They ch <laughs> they changed it. It's under the packaging. If you when you lift this up, that plastic packaging that it's in, you lift it up, and then it's coiled up underneath. We've had a few schools throw them away. Luckily, they were able to go dumpster diving. I bet that was fun. <laughs> but um, and get it. So it it is. It's a USB A to A. A to A. The new ones have a little adapter swinger thing that you can change it from A to C oh. if you need to, but you got to use that cable. And this this guy comes in at $299. Doesn't get as warm. No, no. It has, does pretty well. It has two status lights, so it has a power light, and that will let you know on the device that it is receiving power from your computer. And then it has a status light, and that lets you know that, yes, we have a connection to uh, from the camera. Yeah, and one positive positive thing or thing that I've liked with these, um, the AV Matrix and the Magewell over the mini recorder is that when you had a, your camera was not, your HDMI cable, I should say, is not sending signal, the mini recorder and the 3G are just black. Right. So you're like, well, uh, wh what is it? Is it the connection to the computer? Is it the connection to the HDMI connection? What What's going on? This thing if the HDMI is not plugged in properly and not receiving signal, it'll give you the beautiful rainbow colors. The color that bars. Let you know it's plugged into the computer, but it's not receiving video. So that part has been a really nice troubleshooting aspect of both of these. And if you get black while it's plugged in, then you know, oh, I'm not getting the power. I don't have the right cord because I'm not getting power to the device. It may not even show up. That's true. Even. That's true. So That's if you're black, you might have to open up your camera lens, your, your <laughs> flapper. True. Yeah. Uh, the next one down the list is uh, a, a somewhat relatively new one uh, from AV Matrix. This one is also a USB capture, but its output is actually USB-C. However, the cord that normally comes with this is USB-C to A. Yes. We're not quite sure why they didn't just do C to C, um, but it is C to A. One nice thing about it, though, uh, it is SDI and HDMI on the same device. Yes, and it's going to be, since there's no software that needs to be installed with this, it's going to be auto-detecting, de um, and it'll go to whatever input has the the video first, if they're both plugged in for whatever reason. I often get, I, I get the question sometimes of, well, what's the difference? Because this guy, um, the just HDMI version, so more in comparison with our Magewell here, 
the HDMI version, I think, is 160, 169, I, 165, somewhere around that ballpark cord included. And then we have this, the, the Magewell is at um, 299. What's the difference? Cord included. So cord, cord included on both. Yes. Oh, convenience. Yes. Um, what, what, what is the difference? Why would I want to go with the Magewell over the AV Matrix? Um, truth be told, I don't know. They. <laughs> truth be told, that's, that's the truth. I'm, I'm being transparent here. I really don't know. I'm sure if you wanted to get really, really nerdy and put a some patterns on there and some pattern swirl or something and put a color matrix, I don't know, whatever, get some fancy equipment that costs way more than what we want to pay for here, uh, <laughs> um, you probably could find a difference. They both do 60 frames a second at 1080p, so that's matched. I, I, I do think that the quality comes in is the Magewell is going to have more or uh, stricter tolerances on acceptability of your their quality control at the, uh, at the factory. So you're not going to, you're less likely to get a defective one right. than your AV matrix where the, yeah, well, that's, that's close enough. That's within it looks good. 70%, Set. 70% good, you know, and because I have had to, I have had to warranty a couple of these because it wasn't sending the signal right. It didn't look right in Wirecast and they were the issue. We exhausted all other problems. So just know that, you know, when you're paying almost $300 for this guy, you're probably not going to have to replace it. Um, there's a chance that you could have to replace this one due to warranty. You Sooner. Sooner, yeah. yeah. So um, call is up to you. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and now our, our last one that we want to talk about, which is going to get its own show uh, at some point, is the... ATEM Mini Pro, which is this model, there is also the ATEM Mini, there is the ATEM Mini Pro ISO, uh, which is all within the Blackmagic line. There's also, if you've been with us at a state event, and I know we have a number of schools that have these now, the AV Matrix, four, four HDMI input switchers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a multiple camera uh, input switcher, um, and this will work as its own capture device. In the recent past, you had, if you had a multiple camera switcher, you had, maybe you had eight inputs, you still needed a capture device mm -hmm. to capture the video out from the switcher before it got to the computer. These switchers, uh, and, and the ATEM was really the first one, I think, uh, actually made the output a USB output so that when you plugged it into your computer, you went straight in with USB, in this case, USB-C, and the computer would recognize it as a webcam. Now, Wirecast or any other uh, Zoom or TeamViewer or anything that you would yeah. plug a, cat, uh, a camera in for, whatever you would use a webcam for, you can now use this as that webcam source. And so it acts as its own capture device. Super, super handy. Built in, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, like you said, there's some that don't. Like, I know Roland does not have right. a built-in capture function. So really, really nice. And... Um, Price wise, Jordan, these things are these things are awesome. These things continue to keep coming down in price. Yeah, they do. We're sub yep. three hundred dollars for four camera inputs. What? And you're Ser you're right at three hundred on one input there. What? I sell <laughs> I sell these and I just made. <laughs> oh my goodness, two ninety five, two ninety nine, four inputs. One input. Oh, one input. Uh, audio inputs as well. Well, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. So okay. as as a straight-up capture device, uh, the AV Matrix and the A10 Mini, we can sell both, um, but the AV Matrix has has a, a very comparable device. <laughs> At the same camera switching in the last four years has just... It, it the it, the industry has literally fallen over itself, making the stuff cheaper and better and better mm -hmm. and better and better, and it's been a very rapid development. Four years ago, you know, we were we were selling to or we were recommending to schools, you know, the the Blackmagic ATEM Television Studio HD. Uh, it had four HDMI inputs, four SDI inputs. You needed a computer running the uh, Blackmagic software to switch the cameras and to control the different things. Um, you needed a separate multi-view monitor. 
Uh, you needed a separate capture device like we just talked about. And and they started on the lowest end at $1,000. Right. And that got you the thing and, and a power supply, and that was it. And these things now are cheaper than... <laughs> Than the an actual I single can't believe, I just real, single oh input and they are highly highly functional. Um, if you were just starting, now we have some new information. Yeah, Jordan, this, but if you were just starting your program, where would you start? Well, that changes a lot because I I can't believe I didn't realize that. I'm gonna go with the A10 Mini Pro because that's uh, that's a no brainer. Boom, you're kind of done. Sorry, but uh, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> What so? What would you choose then? Well, I, I, I would go with the with probably with the A10 Mini Pro, maybe the ISO for the ISO recording feature. Um, that's something Hoosier wants to do with this podcast is actually bring all of the cameras in one time, and then he can just and then it gives you a nice file with all the cameras synced up and the audio synced up. Uh, so if you were doing podcasting, ISO recording would be nice because you would record each camera independently. Mm-hmm. Or if you wanted to do highlight videos of broadcast and you had let's say you had main and iso or you had main and two floor cameras and you wanted to make a highlight video of your game well during your game you might not take the camera on the floor all the time and catch the highlight but if you were recording with the a10 mini iso you would have that video file of whatever that camera shot uh, whether it was on air or not then you could yeah. go back and you could use that as as your uh, your editing okay. Yeah, so the the A10 minis are the way, are the way they are the way to go, and they make eight input the eight, extreme the extremes, and uh, they they do they have came out with SDI yep um but that we'll get into that in our our switcher um video but hey um post down in the comments what uh what capture card do you use what capture cards do you like do you agree with us. Let us know in the comment section because we'd love to hear from you and what you're using because there are other capture cards out there that uh, we'd love to consider. We would we would love that. Mm-hmm. We would love comments. Please let us know what you like. Uh, and don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when this episode airs, as soon as it airs, even before we get the social media out about it, right? I mean, because sometimes we hit publish on YouTube and then... We don't send the tweet for a little while because we got things going on like state basketball, right? Um, don't forget that Strive is at the intersection of digital media education and delivers an engaging curriculum, innovative audiovisual equipment, including paperweights. Jordan will not sell you a paperweight, we promise. And Ooh. and it what? Send us a picture of this, and you'll get. Sorry, Strive AV. Send us a picture of your uh, mini recorder and its useful non-streaming function. And we'll give you a little discount on a new one. So. Oh, that's good. Oh, that man, we're going to sell some capture cards. I like this. Uh, and I forgot where I was in the end. And so it's a, it's an education-based <laughs> streaming platform for K-12 schools. <laughs> Find out how Strive can help start and grow your school's digital media program at strive.tv slash product. I'm Eric. That's Jordan. Thanks for watching us on the Tech and Teaching Podcast. <laughs>